Hi everyone, happy Sunday evening. Hoping you had a wonderful weekend. The weather was gorgeous today, so I hope you I won't even mention about yesterday. I hope that you had a wonderful day today outside walking and enjoying the warm weather. Before I start my vlog on Google Hangouts and the difference between norms and rules, I found a meme this weekend that I thought was very appropriate that I wanted to share with you. Um, teachers are saying to you, just log in to Zabblezoop, scroll down to Zonk app, and have the kids work through the assignments sent through Cracklezam, or check the links posted in Drumblekick. And parents are looking like, you want me to do what? We know this is very tricky, and it's almost like trying to teach yourself a completely new language, um, but hopefully we will be able to help you along the way. We want you to keep the faith. We're here for you, so please reach out with any questions that you might have throughout the process of, of getting your kids started every day as they're learning from, from home. Um, one of the things that I think we thought about being most important is that and as I move you through this slideshow, I can show you that we talk a lot at school about what norms we would need in order to be successful um, in our learning environments. And to bring everyone to that common understanding, we create these norms. Uh, and they are different than rules, which I'll talk a little bit about. Um, a norm is something that's going to provide you structure. And it will serve as a way for, in this case, students to have input in how something will look feel and sound for their community learning communities at school uh, and the difference there is that you're more likely to get buy-in when you norm things with students as opposed to rules they can be perceived by students as this is my way or the highway you're going to do this because i want you to do this uh, not necessarily because this is what we all need in order to learn uh, it doesn't always also consider that children's voice and you typically do not get as much buy-in that way. They keep the order, but you are not creating an environment where students are getting what they need in order to learn. So the norms for students at Gibbs during our on-site learning, um, we spent the first four weeks of school actually establishing the norms in almost every space that students would need to be using. Um, that includes hallways. We talked a lot about the cafeteria, we talked about the media center. We talked about the gym, recess, and classrooms. So they had input into all of those spaces. And actually, if you were to walk around the building when it reopens, you would see posters hanging in these places made by kids with the norms that we would expect to see when we use those spaces. So what now? We are not on site. Definitely not on site, but we bet that you at home have been trying to create some sort of patterns, norms, maybe even some rules, which is okay, um, in your house so that your children are engaging in their learning. Having those expectations and norms are essential for sixth graders, on site or not. And here are the two major reasons why. Sixth graders have difficulty making decisions but they want to make decisions for themselves and they want to make choices. So if they have difficulty doing that, we, we need to provide the scaffolding under which they do that so that they can feel successful. Um, in addition to that, sixth graders want to have control of their environment, but they don't really know how to do that. And that comes out in some silly ways sometimes, which needs some redirection and kind of wonder where that's coming from. Well, you know, that's that their frontal lobe is really developing those skills. And so the scaffolding you put in place for that is, is really important. Our scaffolding, as you've heard before, is understanding unified and unstoppable. You know, if those core values are there, students then have a, have a scaffold in order to, you know, make good decisions. Um, they, they understand what it looks, feels, and sounds like for everybody to be able to enjoy, for example, learning in learning spaces, eating in the cafeteria, moving through hallways, playing in the gym. They can be part of making good choices about their actions when they're in those spaces because they know what's expected there. So now their classroom interactions are virtual. They don't know necessarily what to expect there because we really haven't told them. 
So just as we would norm inside the building, we needed to norm our virtual space as well. Uh, most students at this point should have received, well, should have attended rather, sorry, should have attended a Google Hangout. Um, it might have been in an advisory or in a content area or maybe in um, spaces where they get supports with different activities. Um, if your child has not attended a Google Hangout, they will be attending Google Hangouts for sure. Um, and so in order to norm that a bit, I sent out a norm document to the students and teachers and asked for their input. I framed what it would mean to be understanding, unified, and unstoppable so they would have the scaffold. And I wrote that at the very top of the document. And you can see those here as I scroll through them, what it means to be understanding during a Google Hangout, what it means to be unified, and what it means to be unstoppable. So from that, this was their feedback. I was careful to point out that as I got their feedback, um, some of the norms that they wanted in the document would actually have been very similar to norms we would have had in school. Um, we will use our time to catch up with one another and engage in the activity our teacher has planned. We will have our microphones on mute if our teacher asks us to have them on mute. We will take turns participating in conversations and have patience while people come off of mute. We will only share information that would be appropriate to share if we were in our Gibbs classroom. If we have questions, we will remember to ask them through chat when we are on mute. The comments in the chat box should only be about the discussions we are having with our classroom, classmates rather, and our teacher. It would be best to be in a space where there's no distractions if possible. And it would be unexpected for a student to record a Google Hangout and it would be unexpected for a student to take a picture of a Google Hangout. So lots of this came from students, not from adults. And many of them, adults would have listed as part of the norms, but having it come from students gets you so much more buy-in. So what does that mean for you at home? What can you do to help with our Google Hangout norms? You can actually go over the norm document with your student, and I will be sending that PDF out again shortly. You can read over the norm document with your child so that they know you know what the expectations are. You can also designate a space for hangouts to happen in your home. If you have a space that has little distractions, that would be great. We understand though every family is different and that might be hard to come by, but if you do, setting one up with a student ahead of time is a great idea. You could practice with a student. If you know how to use Google Hangout, you can actually log into Google and show them where mute is and show them where chat is and, and you know, show them how to come on and off of mute. Um, and if you do not know how to use Google Hangout, you can certainly reach out to me and I can be helpful with giving a little bit of a tutorial. And you can understand the logical consequences if you're unable to follow the norms that we have established for our Google Hangouts. Um, so, for example, when we talk about norming, we also talk about, well, what's going to happen if I need a reminder? Or what's going to happen if I need to be redirected? Um, or what is going to happen if I have to lose, lose a privilege? Um, and so what I will share with you now is actually what that document looks like that your student received. Um, and as I'm looking, you'll see at the top, there are the norms that I was talking with you about. Yeah, and a student is in here right now, which I love, I love when I see that. So the understanding unified and unstoppable scaffold is right there at the top. There are the nine norms that students and teachers agreed upon and the logical consequence at the bottom, that clear expectation of what will happen if you're not able to follow the norms is that there will be conversations with your grown up, and there will be a discussion of losing the privilege. I really don't expect that to happen for any of our students. Um, but it's always important to have it in place if we do need to do some redirecting. So again, I will send this PDF out again to you. Wanted to give you a chance to watch the vlog first. So that will come out to you. And I am really hoping that this will help you in the upcoming weeks as Google Hangouts will definitely uh, become more of a habit in your home. Um, and it will be the way that students can really have some more interactions with their classmates and get some questions answered about the activities that are being sent out. And with that, I wish you, as I usually typically wish the kids every day, I'm wishing you parents go blaze some trails with new Google Hangout norms.
and really have a good time discussing this with your sixth grader and make it a learning experience. Thank you for tuning in and I will see you at the next vlog, which will most likely come out on Wednesday. Have a great evening.